are you okay? You sound kind of depressed or something? No, yeah, I am because these they've been having a lot of issues because these people put cleaner in my food. Everybody, a oh, welcome in. I know it's been a while. And let's uh, jump right into Letitia Stelk's uh, latest uh, prison calls. But I just want to touch on one uh, right now with her aunt, uh, Brenda. And poor Letitia Stelk, paranoid. Are they putting cleaner in her food and in their hair remover in her conditioner? Hmm. <laughs> and with that, guys, uh, let's get into it. I honestly have about three hours of Letitia Estelk's prison calls, but this one just goes back to the broom incident where she measured the window at the mental institution and she was going to pay that girl to help her break out. Her doctor letters to the judge, but now we've got this. Let's listen to the rest of this calls. I honestly cannot wait to hear your thoughts and let's get into it are you okay you sound kind of uh, or no yeah i am because these they've been having a lot of issues because these people put cleaner in my food like a bunch of stuff so and let's also remember that she was moved from colorado to kansas where she resides at the topeka women's a prison it's just been a lot, so, so did, I didn't. Did I didn't they go find see. out who done it. Uh, well, so I the chaplain came in here earlier, and I talked to the chaplain about it. So then she said she was going to go talk to the captain, but there was officers in that were around the food this morning. But then, well, so yesterday what happened is there was cleaner all in the celery, and so then everybody at first just thought I was just a little crazy or something. So then this morning, I was going to get the, the food out of the thing or whatever, and then this girl was like, oh, ha, you better watch your food. And so then other people heard them, and they were like, oh, gosh, you were for real. So then after that, um, we left out of the area where you get the food or whatever, and I came back because, like, all the eggs were smashed and, like, everything. Someone had clearly done something to it. And then someone already switched out my... Um, I had ordered uh, uh, soap and a uh, conditioner, and someone switched the conditioner out and put this hair loss stuff in. So a hair loss, hair like this hair loss stuff. It's uh, for people who want to shave. You know how like the nair stuff. It was yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So they had put that on there. So I talked to the chaplain today, and I told her about it. Who then, then the mental health counselor came and talked to me, and so then she documented all of it. And she was like, I'm going to meet with you tomorrow to uh, do some more paperwork on it. So I don't know what's going on right now. But then the chaplain told me she was about to go email the warden. So. You think she should what? The email, I mean, the chaplain said she was going to go email the warden. Um, so she came you in think here. You did? I'm pretty sure the chaplain did, for sure. If I, that's why I talked to her about it, because I know she at least, you know, keeps her word on stuff like that. Do uh okay okay now oh, I just been stressed out right? about it you know if, if okay well now are they taking your stuff out of your room too no we have single rooms it's not an issue where I'm housed because I'm in a mental ill health thing it's just an yeah, issue I'm, where what I'm saying is is how do they how do they get to your conditioner to put that other stuff in there so the canteen is done by the boys right. So the boys don't bother my stuff. The canteen comes over by the boys, which is the food and all that, right? So the boys at the right. prison beside us package the women's stuff, and then they send it over here, and everything's fine. However, the stuff from catalog, which is a separate thing you order from, so like if I needed to get a certain kind of bath stuff or whatever, you do it from the separate catalog. I did it from there. That's packaged by women. That's over here. And then they bring that stuff from catalog is packaged by the women inmates that are work in that unit. So that's how. It's the same way as 
the food situation happened because of the people that work in the cafeteria. Okay. Now, I just got in. I just walked the beach. I walked from 8th Avenue to the pier, so I'm walking two miles. That's good. Uh, I try to walk it every day in the afternoon about this time. Uh-huh. Anyway, hey, let me ask you this. So, I'm going to send you some money, but I send your money the same way nothing's changed as far as that, right? Yeah, because they don't, like, they can't mess with anything to do with stock food that's fault. The reason they do that is the men do our laundry and the men do our canteen food and stuff because they have so many problems with, huh? They wash your underclothes at all? You put them in a bag and you send the them back man? over. Yeah, the men, the reason they've done that is because the women over here were stealing all the people's clothes. So if they switch and let the men do it, the men don't steal the clothes. You know what I mean? So so, so you so you you're accountable. You got your clothes and everything. You're not sitting under your personal blog. No, it it's just the issue with the cafeteria. And then when we went to the gym, uh, I had rocks threw at me. So she sits in a mental ward of this. A prison and she is now having rocks thrown at her I to this day people can get mad at me but to this day I truly believe that she is not sane or what soever but the chaplain said she's going to talk to the warden but if she doesn't then I'll send him a message myself you know and the only thing about that now do you still have the warden's phone number and stuff uh I mean, I, I, got I, I sent that stuff to you, yeah. Yeah, I got it, I got it at the house. I don't have it here at the beach. I need to, I need to, I have a folder at the house with all your stuff in it. Everything. Yeah. I got one with your name and one with Harness name, you know. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, um, I got this, I got your thing in my book. I'm getting ready to look to make sure I got everything put down. So I need, I need to send you some money. I know you need some money, baby. Yeah. So this is this is what's happening here. Your daddy said he sent you forty some dollars. He sent well, me. Well, <laughs> well, I'm just okay. I'm just saying what he said. I don't know what he's doing. I truly want to go over uh, these other recorded phone calls from the jail. And she seems to only talk to a Brenda Aquard. She is the one who went and rented the car when they came back to Florida with Gannon in the back of the moving truck. She speaks about her father, who she has no contact with. And from what I'm gathering, her and her mother have never had a relationship. She is not talking to Harley, and I think her sister, Julie, is the one that is trying to reach out to her. But we will get into all of those phone calls, uh, probably in uh, the next uh, live. Let's listen to the reasons, or the reason, uh, that she may have been sent to Topeka in Kansas. And I'm still trying to figure out This call was from August, and I know she was moved to Topeka in Kansas in August. So I'm not sure if these calls come from Colorado or after her move to Topeka, or maybe she had the move due to everyone threatening her. I am going to dig into that, but let's listen. We got our 11 call for action team has learned that Letitia Stouk has been moved out of Colorado. We got a tip this morning and I started looking into it for you. The Colorado Department of Corrections confirmed to me that Stouk has been moved to a Kansas prison. Stouk was found guilty of killing her 11 year old stepson Gannon in a case that just rocked our community. I reached out to the Kansas Department of Corrections. They tell me she is not entered into their system at this time, but there's only one facility for women in Kansas. It's the Topeka Correctional Facility. This is a picture from the Kansas DOC website. 
Now, I asked the Colorado prison system why Stauk was moved. I'll let you know what I hear back. I have also asked when she was transported. I'm wondering if she's being moved right now, which would explain why she's no longer showing up in the Colorado prison system search for me or in the Kansas search yet. You may remember years ago, I told you about what's called the Interstate Compact Agreement. That's a program where states trade certain prisoners due to safety concerns or for other reasons. I had uncovered that the Aurora Theater shooter had been moved to another state in 11 call for action investigation that I did. I've asked the state if this move with Letitia is part of that same program. I'll let you know as soon as I find out directions to look for Leticia and I could not find her. So if I put in Stauk, Leticia, we know her middle name is Lynn. I put alias in case she's a Harden and submit no offender found. Go into Colorado, find an inmate, last name Stauk. And I do not think she changed her name to Harden yet, but I checked Harden too. And she was not in under Harden. Leticia, female. Submit, no offender search, and she's not in Vine Link. So I am going to have to dig a little deeper, but I want to hear your thoughts. And with that, guys, it is a wrap. Everyone, I thank you for coming in. And please make sure you click that like, and the subscribe, and the bell for notifications so you do not miss the next time we drop a video and or a go live. Everybody, I have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world and stay vigilant. I am out.